Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Shady. I'm the director of the Alaska Division of Agriculture. So today um, I'm going to give a brief update uh, where we are on a lot of things. Uh, staff is out in the field. Uh, as you guys know, it's springtime and planning is going on. So we've got people out in the field. We've been doing some uh, initial inspections. We've been doing a lot of uh, work. Uh, of course, had a busy month with the legislature. Now it's down to uh, special session time, but I thought I'd give a rundown, kind of talk about things, kind of let people know where we're going to be. We've got some exciting uh, things coming up in the next month or so, so I really wanted to make sure we get the word out there and let everybody know what we're doing at the division and how we're getting started here in this summer. We're looking to have a really important, uh, busy summer now that we're coming out of COVID. Uh, the emergencies are over. We can get out and about and see things. So uh, we got through last year, really proud of staff and how we got through a bad COVID year. And uh, we didn't catch COVID from our work and we didn't give it to anybody. And that uh, I've said before, but I think it speaks to the professional level of work we do here. So I just have to do a huge shout out to Senator Hughes. Uh, she was the prime sponsor of Senate Bill 27, ended up having a number of uh, very important senators join her. Uh, Re Representative Hopkins from uh, Fairbanks, Esther, uh, did the House bill, uh, and so we had worked that through the House side. Senate Bill 27 was passed uh, and uh, is now going to be on its way to the governor. So I just, to all the legislators, I appreciate all the questions. It, uh, there were some really good questions as we worked through the process, some amendments that were pushed through. Uh, Senator Keel had some great additions that, that we worked in through the process. So uh, it, it was a pleasure working with the legislature uh, the governor's office, their legislative team, uh, team effort. But again, uh, Senator Hughes, a big shout out. Uh, more to come when uh, we're ready for a uh, bill signing ceremony. Uh, I'm sure that this is one the governor has been watching with, with great interest. So I'm pretty confident uh, this is definitely something uh, that we tried really hard to get done. Uh, the vote was literally 58 to 2. Uh, for the bill, but the you know the, the real number was 60 to nothing uh, for our, uh, our our dates for getting this in place. So it really shows you that it really was a consensus uh, that this is a great program that we need to move forward. So again, thanks to all of our legislators, thanks to all of you who have supported us as we do this, uh, as we did this process. Uh, registrations are ongoing, uh, and we have staff working on that. So. Uh, you know, folks that haven't got their retail registration in or others, uh, you need to do it. The legislature did uh, really believe in the program, but they, they put mandatory citations in, in the new bill. So people that have been waiting to see if this is going to be a permanent program, it's going to be a permanent program. Uh, there will be mandatory citations if you're not part of the process. That was something the legislature wanted to see that we we really did uh, enforcement for the safety and, and equity for everyone in the, in the industry. So uh, there's your update. And again, uh, thanks to the Senator for doing that. Especially crop grants. So we're really, really pleased to announce that we uh, uh, recently sent out a number of grants uh, for our specialty crops. This is uh, within uh, USDA. Now, uh, every year we have to go through, the final stage is to get the USDA to approve what we have moved forward, but I did want to say that we have forwarded to the USDA $217,000 worth, especially crop grants. They go to folks from uh, all around the state, from Interior, Glen Allen, down Southeast, Haines, and others, down to Homer, and then here in Palmer, the uh, Matanuska Experiment Farm. Uh, a lot this year on mariculture, uh, a lot on uh, different specialty crops. Uh, the berry trials, uh, we've got blueberries and strawberries. A couple of different ways we're looking at that. We're looking at accessibility to get people into markets. So, you know, this is where uh, the federal funding goes directly to support our industries. And so uh, there were a few that we, we literally ran out of money. We, we're not able to propose moving forward everybody uh, but it literally was a selection process, and uh, you know we really, really worked to make this a fair and equitable uh, process that looks around the state in uh, a bunch of innovative work was proposed here. So 
this is a picture of seaweed, and uh, you know this is, as everybody knows, really a growing industry uh, that uh, we have here in this state. And you know, uh, we just really want people to know that this is uh, something that the division uh, is supporting, in addition to our sister agencies, Fish and Game, DEC, Environmental Conservation, and Mining on Water, one of our uh, other agencies. So. All of these different agencies were working on this uh, as a state uh, collaboration. This I am really excited about. We are going to have an event up in Nanana on June 11th. That's coming up real soon, 10 to 5. Uh, it's 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we've got the city involved. We've got the local village involved. We've got NRCS. I mean, I can give you the list of acronyms. But what we're going to do is we're going to show folks why we're going to be working on 100,000 acres with ag land and the Nanana Tachaka project. And that we figured the best way to get this rolling and the best way to show people what's going to be available is to go out there into that local area. So all of our agencies that are working with us, that are doing the soil pits, uh, all the different uh, agencies that might be able to help new beginning farmers, we're gonna have a really good group of people throughout the day that can answer questions that are people are interested. And, uh, you know, this may become an annual event. We really like the idea. The community has been rallying about it. We'll have some question and answer sessions. People have asked about farm plans. We're going to be able to answer most of your questions. We're going to have a lot of staff there. So we really invite people to come down, come out, come up, wherever you may be from. But uh, this is going to be our first event. But, you know, we're, we're looking at a 30-year project here, so this is not going to be our last event. But, again, June 11th, uh, right there as you go across the bridge, you can see a little parking lot on the right side of the screen. We're going to set up there. We're going to go out. We're going to have uh, pits dug so you can actually see what the soil looks like and have soil uh, folks that can explain what you're looking at. So it's, it's going to be a really exciting day. Uh, a lot of folks up there. Uh, I'll be there, so look forward to seeing you there. Another one, you know, and, and you're probably going to hear me talking about this all summer, because we are really excited to have Sunday, August 29th, the division supporting the Alaska State Fair. And we're going to be talking about ag industries. We're going to be talking about Alaska grown. We're going to be really, really supporting what the fair does because they support what we do. So, you know, I, I'm going to encourage people. We have a really nice long fair this year. Those folks have done a really good job. Uh, last year, as you guys know, we weren't able to have a formal big fair. And so uh, this team that's running the fair, uh, they've been uh, really sharp and they close Tuesday and Wednesdays because they want to keep it safe and clean, but three weekends. So this is going to be a really uh, neat thing. You'll see more coming out about what we're going to do. Uh, Farm Family of the Year, those kind of events, of course, are always at the fair. And so our day, August 29th, I'll be there. Uh, we've got some dignitaries that are planning on coming. More to come on that as we go down the road. But um, again, we keep, we'll, we're going to be reminding you uh, Sunday the 29th of August. Um, that is going to be the day that uh, you, you're going to get your Alaska your own uh, swag and different things that we're looking at doing. So, um, you know, I know I gave out pins two years ago, Alaska grown pins, and they were out. By the end of the day, we had already run out. So I know people like to get that stuff, and we intend to be able to do that again this year. So I just really wanted to talk a little bit about uh, our invasives program. Uh, you see Dan there on the boat. Dan spends a lot of his summer running around looking for Elodia and killing Elodia. And uh, this, is, this is our go-to expert on, you know, how do you get rid of Elodia? So we have spent a lot of time focusing uh, in the Matsu, uh, you know, I've talked about the Bick Lake problem, uh, of course, Alexander Sucker Lakes, a multi-million dollar program that we're about two-thirds of the way through. Uh, but what we have found in the last couple of years is the Fairbank Soil and Water uh, District's work. Uh, they've got Chena Slough pretty well cleaned up, but it's uh, kind of morphed and got over in some lakes. So uh, we've worked with Senator Bishop and the local legislators in the area, and we're going to be up there working with the soil and water folks. Uh, Joni Schaffenberg and her team, we're going to get into the lakes and we're going to be looking out there. So if you, you know, this is always the general shout out. If you suspect you have a Lodi in a lake anywhere in the state, 
reach out to Dan, reach out to the division, and uh, we'll work with you to make sure we have a positive identification and build an eradication plan. So well, we, we know we have a problem. We are actually have a statewide plan working with a lot of state and federal agencies to make that work. So we're gonna have a lot of focus this year up on the interior. Uh, we got some lakes that we got a Lodi in and we use those as water lakes for firefighting. So that creates a conflict and we're gonna be in there and get that Lodia cleaned out so we don't have that uh, conflict. And uh, definitely it impacts our, our fisheries it impacts our ecosystems. And so this is a big program. The legislature has definitely uh, made it a priority for us. It was before that, but they've helped us with funding. It looks like coming in, budget's not done, but, but they're working on it. So I just really wanted to let people know, uh, as you see this coming up, early year, you see the, 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 the plants grow. Lodia grows under the ice in the winter, but it really kicks off again. And if you see it, let us know. We uh, we're happy to report that most of the time the reports are not a Lodia, but when they are, it's something we want to get on in early spring and make sure that we don't get that spread throughout the summer. So the governor's agriculture budget, and I can only talk in a tentative tone because we're in conference committee now, but I really want to thank Governor Dunleavy and the team in the capital budget move forward is $5 million for Nananatot Checkett and seven and a half million for our agricultural projects around the state. We have a division budget that is fully funded and uh, some additional funding that we're gonna work with on uh, Elodia eradication, other invasives. We also are looking at being able to go out and uh, work on grabbing some of the federal uh, resource money that's coming in due to COVID and rural development and so uh, ideas are always welcome to come in to me as the director. We're looking at what we can do to revitalize Alaska's economy. And Fred Velia and I are the two guys tasked, Fred's in the governor's office, with making sure that agriculture is a cornerstone to our economic recovery. And so we are working every day to do that. And I just wanna you know, thank the administration, um, you know, my commissioner, uh, deputy commissioner, and the governor and his, the team for supporting uh, and getting us back on track with agriculture. Uh, micro grants, uh, you know, uh, by now, if you did a pre-application, you should have heard from the division. And uh, some folks, uh, it came uh, from a third party vendor because we have now uh, have a, a company named Smart Simple, their program uh, because there's literally too many grants to do this by hand. So that came uh, from their name, not from the uh, uh, .gov, Alaska.gov account. So if you didn't get it, it might be in your junk mail or uh, you might have missed it. So reach out, you can look at uh, this uh, site. Uh, it will get you into the folks so you can make sure you know uh, that uh, you're in, in most everybody. We, we basically accepted 2,000 um, uh, people for further moving forward with the grants. I know that looking at the data, because it's computerized now, we've got about 400 in process. That's great, about 50 are completed. We really do ask that you try to get these done and in before the deadline so that we can start our reviews and get our review committee looking at these. Because if we have 2,000 grants on the last day, it's just gonna slow down our process. We have to get these back out to the USDA and we really expect by fall to be able to move uh, the year one forward. We do have a little, uh, I think it's about $2.1 million that we're gonna move forward in the next phase. And we will not be a pre-application process, it will be a straight grant process coming for fiscal year 22. So I wanted to, this fall, uh, about the time we're done with uh, fiscal year 21, We'll roll out fiscal year 22. So uh, if you uh, didn't make ground one, uh, that's okay. I mean, we really did have a huge amount of um, interest. I mean, I think everybody kind of knows that now. Uh, but this is going to be a continuing program. And there are a few folks that somehow didn't get the message and missed the deadline. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, you, you have that notice. We're doing our best to make sure everybody knows. And when we roll that back out, We'll again do Facebook Lives and our press releases 
And uh, so we're learning how to work this program. It is a lot more difficult and a lot more complex. Uh, now that we're working through the USDA rules, um, what I thought was going to be a simple, easy uh, granting process has become a lot more challenging. Uh, we had literally have two full-time people on it, and I had no idea that that was going to be required. So we've actually had to, to move some resources around so that we have two people working on this, trying to get caught up, trying to get it done. And so, uh, you know, I know it's been frustrating. We've lost a grow year. I acknowledge that. It is something that was very frustrating for every person on this team as we have tried to get this out. And so uh, I shout out to Senator Murkowski, Senator Sullivan, and Congressman Young uh, for keeping this in the budget and the, on the federal side and moving this forward. So our delegation, uh, I can assure you, is checking in all the time. The governor's office is checking in. We are trying really hard to get this set up so it'll be an efficient and effective process. We really are trying to cut down the time that it takes you guys and the public to apply to make sure we have clear expectations, clear guidelines. Uh, that's taken a little more time than we expected to do. We continue to work with USDA on what definitions mean things and, and how Alaska is different. Uh, I, part of my frustration in this job some days is explaining to folks in the lower 48, and we call, I call it the lower 48, that's what I've done since I was little, it's the lower 48, and I go, your ag world is not our ag world, and we're trying to get them to understand as the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court said, Alaska is the exception to the rule. And so we use that and we try to get them to understand what works for Alaska. Uh, no greenhouses, okay, fine, but a season extender, all right. Uh, and we have to play vernacular. We will help you learn how to play vernacular. But there are parts of Alaska you're going to need to do in closed grow to make it a sustainable long-term food supply. And so we are struggling, and I just, you know, being right up front with folks, we are struggling to get the USDA to understand how difficult some of our rural areas have it in trying to make this work, especially in our northern climates. And, and we did notice that we had a lot less applications from up north, and I think it was just the challenges of trying to make this work for Alaska. So over time, I can assure you, we are well aware of the challenges and we'll be working with the delegation, the governor's office, to make this work better for Alaska. But it's gonna take us a while. And bureaucracy, you know, people don't maybe realize, but we're doing it at bureaucratic light speed. Things don't happen fast. So setting up a program and getting it done in six months really is fast in a bureaucratic world. The team has worked really, really long hours trying to make this world. So yeah, it's up, it's running. We've got it as uh, efficient and as automated as we can, and we've got a team there, go on grants, um, uh, our webpage, and uh, if you can't figure it out there, there are ways to uh, communicate. Uh, email's much better than the phone time because we're really limited in how many hours of the day we can have staff talking one-on-one, -on -one. but we do, I think, have a very good hybrid that'll work for folks. Uh, today, just this morning, uh, I got a, the, uh, the USDA announcement, wasn't sure, but we have the 2020 reimbursement uh, transportation uh, cost uh, program. And uh, a lot of folks know about that, but a lot of folks don't. So this is where for, as it says, outside the contiguous 48, there's an off, excuse me, there's an offset for cost of transportating our goods. And that is inputs as rather as got as outputs. So uh, by program, it says here $8,000 per producer is a cap. Last year, it wasn't fully funded. Uh, I think it's a 0.8% uh, reduction overall for folks. But if uh, you are having, you know, the challenges of paying for getting your, your inputs in or your product to market, this is one of those small things that can make you help. So Go to usda.gov, and that program's there, and we definitely want to make sure people know when these programs are available, especially those that are unique to Alaska. And so that is, this is one of those, uh, just went in my inbox this morning, and so we wanted to make sure people really knew, uh, hey, it's back, we weren't sure, but it did get funded, and that's really good news, and again, that's a shout out to our congressional delegation 
working with the USDA to make sure these programs work for Alaska. And uh, just a couple of final pictures. This year, uh, I, I really had the, the great fortune of three sunshiny days in uh, southeast last week. So I was down in Craig and Klawak, and uh, this is some pictures of uh, Premier Aquatics. Uh, they were doing a uh, ribbon kelp collection. And so uh, this is Mariculture, where I actually got to go out in the field and watch as they were uh, working to harvest. And uh, great news, you know, we have a number of great companies getting into the business, and so it's really hard to help if you don't go out and see what it is. So uh, really thank to Marcos and the team down there. Great uh, work, and it was a real pleasure uh, get, getting the tour and seeing from beginning to end. I got to look at the nursery and see how that was all the way out to, uh, and we got to see some actually processing work. So uh, that was a great couple of days, very helpful. They have an IRLF loan uh, that they're working on, and so it's really important for us to see how they do things, all of our different uh, industries, so we can make sure that they work and have the resources out there to build this industry. Uh, I can tell you from what I've learned, Alaska's clean water, uh, you know, we always say uh, agriculture, we have clean water, clean soil, clean air. Well, you may take a bit of the soil out of that uh, equation, but in Alaska for mariculture, we have clean water, we have clean air, uh, that product's gonna sell on a, on a national and an international basis. So we're really excited to see the different things that are being developed and grown in Alaska. Fledgling industry growing exponentially, very, very pleased to see uh, how that's all coming together. And now while I was down there, Curtis Knight, this is a picture of Curtis. Uh, we were boring laws because we were looking for pests. Uh, this is for uh, export. And uh, uh, Bryce and Steve at Viking Lumber really appreciated the tour. Uh, and, and talking to those folks while we were down there doing that inspection, there was, uh, these logs are going to China. Uh, we were looking, uh, I believe these are the yellow, um, I'm really bad at my, my logs. Um, so I'm not gonna say it cause I'm just gonna goof it up. But, but there were different hemlocks, there were different um, Sitka spruce, things there. And so um, I think white cedar, and red cedar they had there too. So I think this was the white cedar, but when everybody tells me I'm wrong, uh, I'll just stand corrected. But it was a great day. Curtis taught me a lot. Uh, the guys at Viking were very informative. Uh, really loved to hear all their niche markets and the things they've done to continue to build their marketing and, and keep that a viable industry in Southeast. So uh, again, I really love it when uh, you know people take the time out to educate us and we're there and, and it's great when staff can show me what they do out in the field because it's hard work, it's very important work and this is how we keep our industries moving. So, you know, just like to show folks kind of the stuff we do. And so um, I think that pretty well covers uh, our uh, update for today. Uh, John, uh, did we have anything that popped up? No, good. So uh, folks, you know, welcome to spring. I hope you enjoy the weather. Uh, I hope you have a great Memorial Day. Uh, all our respect to all those that served and especially, as always, to those who died in service to our country. With that, thanks. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. Take care.